Certainly, all of us have family members, as I do. And as I have lived my life, I have honored that and respected them as a family member. I do a family list for both sides of the family, and everybody is included. I live that out and practice that. But as I have told them, this is a matter of public law. And as we take a look at what is actually written in this language, I'm reminded of last fall before the constitutional amendment and folks were told on TV, radio, and other ways as well, that it was okay to vote no, because nothing would change. They were told it is okay to vote no, because nothing would change. Do they feel betrayed today? Absolutely. Do they feel lied to? Yeah, because they were told nothing would change. So here we are today with a massive change. Understanding that we have these changes, that is true. And so the bill is before us. But as we try to put in here some First Amendment protections, the rights of an individual First Amendment being rebuffed and being turned down, as if somehow we cannot have both, that is not true. But it is also sad once again here today to say, it's okay, it'll just be okay, really. In every other state, in every other country, we have not seen that to be the case, in fact, in law, and in court cases. So that is the reality. And so our efforts here in regards to the law that is actually in front of us to making our positions known to be clear, that I'm able to stand here today in support of traditional marriage as one man and one woman, and my ability to say so here on the Senate floor. But my fear and my concern that for other people, as they go about their daily business in Minnesota, will not have that individual right. And that, to me, is a sad day. Madam President, I'm voting no on this bill because of the lack of First Amendment protections and because I believe marriage, one man, one woman, and their capacity for having children is the best public policy. Thank you.